Alright, I'm back again and it's early in the morning. I'm on my way to work. And last night, right before I went to bed, I saw an article about the Emmett Till case. I think it was down in Mississippi. Um, and I may throw a link down below on uh, what that is specifically for you to research. But what happened uh, is that the fam family members of his uh, were doing some re digging and they found a, an arrest warrant for the woman of one of the people who, one of the men who were accused of murdering him were acquitted and then basically admitted, yeah, we did it. And now they're like, she needs, they found out she's still alive. She's in uh, North Carolina and they want her arrested using this warrant. And I'll try to see if I can come up with a good article on this uh, to send to throw in the description as well. And that may be suffice to give you a background on the story itself. I'm going to make a prediction and that is that if you are expecting justice to be served and she'll be arrested don't hold your breath you might only want to uh, hold, hold out on divine justice karmic justice what have you Here's why. Um, I know the Department of Justice did look into reopening the case uh, in 2007. They said, eh, there's no, not enough supporting evidence to justify reopening. Basically, they said, there's nothing we can do. Now, they are saying that because this warrant was found that that's evidence enough. Well, I'll say how a lot in the article, some warrants after time can become invalid. They're just pieces of paper. And they don't even know at this point in time if that's the case. Matter of fact, in the article I read, the sh current sheriff in that county didn't even know anything about it. He hadn't even seen it at that point in time. He was working on getting a copy of it. So even if he did point out that, let's just say he took it to the district attorney and they said, yeah, that's it's still going to be valid. Could still be used to get her to arrest her well you run into does the county even want to prosecute her at this point or does anyone want to try and prosecute her at this point because let's face it I'm willing to wager every single key witness that could tie her into everything I'm willing to wager they're all dead at this point she very well could be the last living person involved. Which means then it just becomes a matter of, and I'm going to try to move you out of the sun. It becomes a matter of uh, the records that were kept in Mississippi. 50, 60 years ago. And involving a potential race. Or, well, not a potential, but involving a racially motivated crime. You can see my skepticism there. Did 
chances are that those records are not going to be as let's, how can I put this politely? As factually accurate as they coulda, woulda, shoulda be. And that's probably one of the main reasons why the DOJ did came up to the decision they did is that the records were not being really reliable and all key witnesses were dead and gone at that point. Some of them were probably dead and gone before I was ever born. Even like the people that know the exact reasons why that warrant was never served and not just the oh she's a mother with kid, little kids it would be a, to put her out that wouldn't have been I'm willing to wager the sole whole reason why that it was they decided not to serve her. That was that may have been just to save face or what have you. Trying to play the sympathy. But that real reason we can't trust the records to be right. And that comes down to well, who would know? And we that goes back to what I said of all the people that would know are dead and gone and probably some of them before I was ever born. So the chances are we never will know. And then, let's, once we put all that aside, let's just say, oh darn, someone hit the lottery. It's supposed to be me, although I didn't buy a ticket. But let's just say, hypothetically, the uh, attorney general or district attorney, whoever, says, yeah, this is a valid document. We want to prosecute. And let's just say even the DOJ backs it up. Theoretically possible. It would have to go to before a judge at some point in time. And... What's the chances a judge is going to rule in favor of a, like, I think they said 55-year-old arrest warrant that was never served? Will a judge uphold it? We don't know. And even then, once all that's done, they're going to flip it to the new jurisdiction for extradition. Or is North Carolina going to want to arrest her and take her back to BF Mississippi? No promises there either. But let's just say hypothetically they do. And then we get in this lovely situation of, um, I think they said the woman is now 81 years old. And let's face it, the criminal justice system in this country is ran by the government. What's the chances they're going to be very speedy? Like I know of one case, and it is a federal case. The person was arrested last year in March. And right now the jury trial is set to take place in middle of March. When you're 81 years old, there's a good chance you, you can't readily say they're going to 
live long enough to see <laughs> the trial. Uh, that's just a cold hard fact of it all. And that's one thing that they would take into consideration is when they weigh arresting her, extraditing her, everything else. Is there enough existing evidence to confirm that she did say this, that she was the one in the vehicle saying that that was him? Because all they ever said was it was a voice that was uh, not they said it was higher or softer than a man's or something like that. And that was the record of the person who heard the voice said, who I'm pretty sure is dead, so there's questionable. Like, they wouldn't be able to confirm the voice anyway, even if it was... Her voice hadn't changed drastically, and even then... That's not a... They could question that. There's enough items that I could see a defense attorney poking holes into the prosecution's case just because of the time that has passed. And then you have, you know, people accusing her who were probably have been dead at least a decade. When you look at all of that, and you look at how much could be objected to, how much could be thrown out for, say, hearsay or what have you, do they have enough to nail her down? And honestly, I don't know because. I have a form of pre-law degree, but I haven't decided I hated myself enough to go to law school. Um, I have not de done a deep dive into every piece of evidence that they have on this particular case. But I do know there are legal experts who have way dug into it and they have said that there's not enough evidence to support reopening it to go after her and a 50 some odd year old arrest warrant I don't think is going to be enough to tip that scale Do I think she was knee-deep in it all, at the very least? Neck-deep, even? Yeah. She may or may not have been there witnessing the actual acts take place. That I don't know. We'll never know, truth be told. I don't know if we'll ever know the truth on that. But is she going to be some sweet, innocent little bystander who knew nothing? No. Uh, not by a long shot. But then again, we get back to the... That's what I think. And thoughts and feelings don't are supposed to be uh, excluded in trials. You have to base it off of actual evidence and For better and for worse, and I say better and worse because in her case it's her betterment and worse because it's a spit in the face of justice in a whole. I don't know if there's enough there that she would ever even stand a trial, much less be convicted.
Anyway, this is already longer than I originally intended it to be, but oh well. Uh, good thing about being at work, I'm not, I have plenty of time to uh, let this video upload. So let me know what you think. I'll, like I said, I'll try and throw a link down below, but do you actually think, what's the chances that she's actually going to stand trial? And even if they do want to pursue charges, what's the chances she'll live long enough to actually stand a trial? I'm not that hopeful. Anyway, later.